Hello and welcome to another Friday bonus video. In this episode, we'll talk about inbreeding and in dairy cattle. In the ambition to breed animals with higher genetic potential for agronomically important traits, there's been extensive loss in genetic diversity. This is the result of inbreeding and artificial selection in the male lineages of different breeds of dairy cattle. The result is fewer and fewer genetic lineages are being used to breed the next generation of cattle in dairy production. As a consequence, there has been extensive loss of potentially beneficial alleles and the fixation of other alleles due to increased homozygosity. There's likewise been a gradual reduction of genetic fitness due to exposure and accumulation of deleterious traits resulting from inbreeding. Deleterious traits, by the way, are traits that increase the possibility of a living thing being deleted. Pun intended. To deal with the situation, Various researchers have worked to try to combat the decline in genetic health within dairy cattle. One such researcher is the researcher Dr. Brian Dormal, who created an R-value method to do so. This is the average genetic relationship computed for individual animals relative to the active females in a recent birth year. This method was provided to the Canadian Dairy Network to producers to figure out which bulls have low genetic relationship values with the current population. This can be used to reduce inbreeding over time. In the United States, Dr. Mu Wesson created his own method called Introduced Optimum Contribution Selection, a technique that restricts the rate of inbreeding to a desired level while maximizing genetic gain. In times gone by, the rate of inbreeding was detected using a method that uses two random alleles sampled from the genome of the breed in question. Researchers would then look for animals that have those same alleles to estimate the amount of inbreeding. In combination with pedigree data and the assumption of no genetic relationships, the levels of inbreeding measured during that time period were inaccurate quite often due to the fact that Pedigree data was incomplete and the assumption of no genetic relationship is unfounded. To deal with the situation, Dr. Paul Van Radden made a more accurate method by estimating the amount of inbreeding by observing a sample of the cattle genome, specifically a strip of the chromosome, and seeing the total levels of homozygosity for that strip. Yet another method by Dr. Yang goes through the entire genome to find the total levels of homozygosity within a population, and comparing it with the level that would be expected absent historical inbreeding using the Hardy-Weinberg equation. This method was found to be more accurate as a consequence, a paper by the University of Guelph in 2020 by Dr. Bayod Makanjula used this method to estimate the amount of inbreeding and co-ancestry over time in Canadian Holstein and Jersey cattle, and here are the results. Based on current data, the level of inbreeding had been steadily rising from the 1990s onward with a rapid increase in inbreeding during the beginning of 2010 that continued until 2018. This is for Holstein. As for Jersey, the level of inbreeding increased from 1990, both far more fluctuations. Then in 2003, it declined before increasing again in 2011. The amount of co-ancestry between different populations of Holsteins and Jerseys follow the same pattern to the average annual inbreeding observed using pedigree and genomic measures. Based on this information, it was found that the selective pressure within the Holstein breed in Canada was far greater than the selection pressure in the Jersey breed. This makes sense since the Holstein is the most raised cattle breed within Canada due to this breed's ability to produce high yields of milk in dairy farm production. The time between generations for both breeds has declined over time, with the time between generations in the breeding process reaching its lowest point in 2018. This is likely due to advances in cattle breeding, allowing the breeding process to be sped up. It used to take 48 years to make a new generation of dairy cattle during the 90s. By 2018, it only takes between two to four years to make a new generation. Between 2010 and 2018, the level of inbreeding declined and is currently on a general direction towards lower inbreeding 
in part thanks to new methodologies in cattle breeding, as well as a greater interest in maintaining a larger gene pool to prevent future inbreeding and allow for new genetic gains to be made in the long term rather than just the short term. And I think that about covers everything. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you really enjoyed it and think you can donate, you can do so at Buy Me a Coffee, link in the description below. Thank you for watching.